Hey everyone, and welcome to our first in-depth look at mages in Shadowlands. Frost, Arcane, and Fire have all, comparatively to other specs, received probably the least changes overall. However, new additions such as Soulbinds, Conduits, and Legendaries, and some nice quality of life changes have made all three specs viable and fun to play. For this video, we've consulted with Wildcard Gaming's AWC tournament competitor, Maro, considered by many to be one of the best mages in the world, and got him to share the basics in order to get you ready to set up your Frost Mage the moment the new Sinful Arena Season 1 starts for Shadowlands including all of the information that you need for races, talents, covenants, soulbinds, conduits, and legendaries. We'll be releasing a refresher guide once Season 1 begins that will cover any outdated information in this guide, along with taking a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and discussing compositions. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified the moment those guides are released. So to kick things off, let's take a look at how Frost Mage is shaping up in Shadowlands. Overall, there are honestly barely any changes to talents, playstyle, and rotation, it's pretty much all relatively the same. The only real changes are the addition of some new abilities including Mirror Images, Alter Time, Fire Blast, Arcane Explosion, and the removal of Temporal Shield. One big change though was a buff to Winter's Chill, which allows your next two spells to act as if the target was frozen, giving you the ability to shatter any spell. So. Given that Frost Mage is basically the same, the playstyle has remained relatively the same. Although that being said, Frost Mage is currently incredibly bursty on the beta, giving you two unique playstyles. First is a spec more focused around your orb and ice lance instant damage, which is great for more setup based compositions while playing with melee. While the alternative that you can go for is a more Frostbolt centric build with improved slows for playing caster cleaves. Overall though, Frost still heavily focuses around shatters, instant damage, and utilizing Winter's Chill with Flurry in order to pump out the damage. Okay, so then how does Frost Mage compare to other casters at the moment? Well, Frost is in a pretty decent spot, just above the middle of the pack. It's not as strong as some S tier casters such as Warlock or Shadow, but of course, in general, Mage's kit is pretty much always just strong. What's lacking currently is just some PvE damage. For example, outside of Orb, if you're getting trained or spam interrupted, you can really start to lack damage. But if left free to correctly line up your damage, Frost Mage is capable of some insane burst. In comparison to Arcane and Fire, Frost is looking to be the go-to mage spec. The reasoning behind is just its flexibility. Fire just lacks damage and survivability. Arcane, while a lot stronger in Shadowlands, still has its major flaw of having both CC and damage tied to the same school of magic. Frost works for both caster cleaves and melee caster setup compositions. While it could be argued that Arcane performs better in certain setup comps, our mage consultant Maro recommends sticking to Frost for now at least. Currently, we don't really think that it needs to be buffed or nerfed necessarily. Just small changes to broken mechanics from other specs would make it be at the level of other stronger specs. Overall, in terms of balancing, Frost is looking to be quite good. While it has some issues when being trained, that's the same for most casters. The only real changes that Frost needs in order to excel is more so changes to other classes. Tuning broken mechanics from Shadow, Elemental, and Warlock will enable Frost to be in a fantastic spot going into Season 1. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, a sub to the channel would be incredible. Alright then, next up we're going to be taking a look at everything you need to get started setting up your own mage, starting off with the best race. If you're playing on the alliance side, human is going to be your best option. The change to PvP trinkets making them no longer an honor talent, and instead being an equipable item, means that humans are the only race that can equip two offensive trinkets while still having will to survive to fall back on. Alternatively, a weaker and more situational option is Dark Iron Dwarf. With a lot of high impact spells such as mind games being added in Shadowlands, the removal of fire blood can gain a lot of value. Meanwhile, if you're playing on the Horde side, the one clear winner if you want to be competitive is of course going to be Orc. Orc brings hardiness which combines well with a medallion, giving the benefit of both relentless four stuns and also still having a way to get out of CC, not to mention the added damage from Blood Fury. Alright, so you've picked your best race, now let's look at talents. Starting on the first row, Lonely Winter is currently looking to be the best option, offering high burst damage combined with Chain Reaction. 
Ice Nova can still be an option, but is generally weaker than Lonely Winter in the majority of situations right now. Next up, you'll of course want Shimmer. Shimmer is just way too powerful to ever consider swapping, giving you the ability to cast while channeling your blink. This will give you a much easier time securing either damage or, more importantly, CC. Dropping down another row, again, nothing to consider. Encanter's Flow is the clear winner here. Rune of Power just requires way too much setup and for you to be stationary. Encanter's is a consistent passive boost to your damage. On the level 35 row, you've got two options. Chain Reaction is great, paired up with Lonely Winter to give you a big boost to your overall Ice Lance damage. With how hard Ice Lance is currently hitting, Chain Reaction is going to be the most common pick. Alternatively, if you're able to freely cast Frost Bolts, Frozen Touch will give you a lot more consistent damage. So think about how the matchup is going to play out and pick accordingly. Moving on, Ring of Frost is the clear winner here for the majority of situations, giving you the ability to double CC and utilize multiple schools of magic to secure that CC. If you think you're in a matchup where crowd control isn't the name of the game, for example, certain caster mirrors when Frigid Winds offers an improved slow to stop enemies retreating or allows you and your partner to more easily damage. But this is very situational, making Ring the most common option. On the pen ultimate row, common Comet Storm is going to be your best hands down for single target instant pressure. So any setup composition or games where you're aiming to focus one target. When facing double melee though, Freezing Rain comes out on top as it allows you to get your Frozen Orb back more often, which is a large source of your damage, especially when being trained. Then lastly, on the final row, the pick is Ray of Frost. This simply adds some nice casted damage that even goes through pillars. While Glacial is heavily nerfed when it comes to PvP and Thermal Void requires way too much hard casting for it to ever be considered outside of very niche scenarios paired up with ice form. Now let's take a look at PvP talents. First and foremost, you'll always want two talents. These are Concentrated Coolness and Deep Shatter. Concentrated Coolness lets you take control of the position of your orb as well as make it stationary and boost its damage. It must have in all scenarios for obvious reasons, whereas Deep Shatter boosts your Frostbolt damage by 150% when used on frozen targets. Now with Winter's Chill further being buffed, this talent has gained even even more value and again is a must have. Then for your third PvP talent, there are a few different options. Kleptomania is great versus any team where you need an on-demand perch. So think Mage Mirrors, Druids, or even Warlocks now that Demon Soul is a magical debuff. You'll want Klepto in the majority of situations as you'll almost always gain value. However, in some scenarios, Nether Wind Armor can be a solid pickup as a way to reduce some of the damage that you take. Ice Form, again, in certain situations can be of good use. Think compositions that look to stun you consistently while in turn lacking a purge to remove ice form. Then finally, the last option to consider is Dampen Magic. With abilities like Power Infusion and Dark Soul being magical debuffs, it's unlikely that you'll pick this up, but when you do need DR versus Dot Cleaves, this can be considered. So that does kind of leave us with a lot to consider when picking up PvP talents, but just take a look at the matchup that you're facing and decide on which third PvP talent makes the most sense. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the new stuff added in Shadowlands, which are Covenants, Soulbinds, Conduits, and legendaries. Don't worry if you're unsure what these are with the expansion being so fresh. We'll cover each of these in depth. First is Covenant Choice. This is going to be the most important choice that you make in the expansion, as currently there is no easy way to swap between. So listen carefully. There are four Covenants, and upon hitting level 60, you will choose which one you want to join. These are Kyrian, Benthyr, Necrolord, and the Night Fae. Each of these offers you three Soulbinds, but we'll talk about that more later, as well as a Covenant ability and a Class ability. The best Covenant to pick for Frost Arena is the Venthyr. The Venthyr Covenant ability is Door of Shadows, which allows you to cast a Sort of Teleport, similar to Blink, but with a cast time. Extra mobility is always welcomed, and this can even be used to go up Z axis. The Class ability mages get for Venthyr is Mirrors of Torment. This conjures three mirrors to torment on the enemy for 20 seconds, and whenever the target casts a spell or uses an ability, one of the stacks is consumed to deal some high damage and reduce their movement and cast speed, as well as giving you an added benefit based on spec. For Frost, this gives you an added Brain Freeze proc, so some very nice instant damage. If all three stacks are consumed, the target will also be rooted and silenced for 4 seconds on top of these effects. While it could be argued that the Kyrian class ability is a lot stronger, the main reason for selecting Venthyr is the Soulbinds. Soulbinds are unique to each Covenant, and you have three options for each one. 
Essentially, a soulbind is binding yourself to a certain NPC character, who then gives you access to a passive skill tree, which you'll progress through as you journey through Shadowlands. The three soulbinds available for Venthyr are Nagia the Mistblade, Theotar the Mad Duke, and General Draven. We recommend going with Nagia the Mistblade as your soulbind. This grants you three insanely strong passives. First is the Agent of Chaos. This gives your Door of Shadows a follow-up CC when you appear. This is on the Fear DR, so is fantastic for a mage. You can use it to secure a poly or just use it to extend an already going chain. Overall, it's just a great addition to a mage's kit. More importantly though, you're able to pick up the familiar predicaments trait, which as you can see reduces all interrupts, snares, and roots by 25%, which is without a doubt the strongest soulbind passive for PvP. And your final soulbind passive is Thrillseeker, which just adds some nice passive haste. This will leave your preferred route looking like this. Now you may also notice some blank spaces. Well, these are what you call conduits. Conduits are placed into three categories, Endurance, Finesse, and Potency. The soulbind route that we selected just now provides us with three potency and one finesse slot. The first slot is a potency one, and for potency conduits, there are five options for Frost. These are Ice Bite, Icy Propulsion, Shivering Core, and Unrelenting Cold, with the Covenant-specific conduit being Siphoned Malice. As our selected route has three potency conduits, and you're unable to have multiple of the same one, the three best are Ice Bite, Unrelenting Cold, and Siphon Malice. With our potency conduits filled out, there is one last, which is a finesse, where we have the option to pick Flow of Time, Grounding Surge, Incantation of Swiftness, and Winter's Protection. Out of these four, the clear winner is Flow of Time, which simply reduces the cooldown of your blink by one second. Grounding Surge would be the next best pickup, but again, we only have one conduit slot. This will leave our Soulbind tree looking like this. All right, that brings us to our final section, which is which legendary you should craft for PvP. Currently, all legendaries are active in Arena, and you may only equip one at a time. This could potentially change later down the line. There are three main options for Frost. First is Cold Front. What this legendary provides is that it calls down an orb after you cast 15 Frost Bolts. In PvP, you only have to cast half the amount. Overall, this is a very powerful legendary if you're able to freely cast, providing you with a lot of orbs, which in turn obviously provides you with Fingers of Frost and the added damage from the orb itself. Currently, this legendary is bugged when using the PvP talent Concentrated Coolness, which is one of your best talents, so until that's fixed, it probably should not be used. The second option is Freezing Winds. This makes it so once your orb is active, you gain a consistent flow of Fingers of Frost procs, then while orb is not active, Frost Bolts reduce its cooldown. This legendary is great just for extra Fingers of Frost procs during your instant burst which means it's good for setup-based comps like Rogue Mage, where you're often the target. Then, finally, the third option is Grizzly Icicle. What this legendary does is buff your damage against enemies affected by your Frost Nova and means it no longer breaks. Again, targets who can't break roots or when healers can't dispel this can offer a huge benefit, both offensively and defensively, as you can simply root a target and continuously unload Ice Lances. The only downside to this legendary is just that there's a lot of counterplay, but it is definitely one to consider. All right then, everybody, that's going to conclude our first look at Frost Mages in the up-and-coming expansion, Shadowlands. You should now have everything that you need in order to get started the second the expansion hits. Be sure to subscribe and check back for our follow-up video, which will include any updates on the information that you saw here, as well as a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and even which comps are best. But for now, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.